In the studio with me today is Toronto-based artist Vivian Rees. Now you'll meet her in a moment later in the interview. Before I take a break, I'll have my regular Good to Know Minute when I ask my guests for their top success tip. And you'll hear Vivian's. Well, Vivian Reese, welcome to the show. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Oh, it's so nice having you here. Now, your art is so magnificent. It's so colorful. Um, you do these really big scale paintings. And uh, what I think is most interesting about you is when you look at your websites and you look at your art, uh, the joy of art and living fully and living joyfully is so important to you. Yes, life is meant to be happy and joyful and enjoyed. I mean, there are bad things that happen. My parents are Holocaust survivors. But I think in that, and immigrating from Hungary, they gave me the knowledge that freedom was such an important part of life because they had been deprived of it and had made sacrifices to come to somewhere where one could live freely. And I think in my art, you see a lot of freedom. And what I want to do is inspire people through my movement, my color, the thoughts in the paintings is that, yes, you can be free. So emotionally free, free to try new things. And that's what I engaged with in my life. And you studied art in New York? I studied, uh, I grew up in New York. Right. And I had actually a very varied background uh, in my education. It was extremely high-end academic. But I studied acting at the American Theatre Wing. I studied Shakespearean acting with the first wife of Humphrey Bogart. I went to the New York City Ballet School and studied under two Russian ballet uh, teachers and Balanchine. I studied classical guitar. I made things. So I had a very full and rounded uh, younger education. Then I went to art school in Boston, to the Boston Museum School. And I studied privately in the studios of Marilyn Powers and Jason Berger. And I think that really formed my idea of how to live life as an artist, both as an economic model and a creative model. Now, you live in your studio, and uh, you've had a considerable amount of media coverage about your art, your lifestyle, your home, your garden. Um, yes. So you, you live in a very colorful, interesting environment. Well, to me, my environment is, is very important. Uh, I think most artists feel that way. There's some artists who are more aesthetic and, you know, want to live very minimally, but uh, my motto is more is more. More is more. <laughs> yes. <laughs> now, you're, you're a mother as well. Yes. And of course, uh, your daughter uh, has been on the show. She's an extraordinary woman as well, Ariel, uh, pardon me, Ariel Garden. Right. Uh, the CEO and co-founder of uh, Interaxon. Um, you must be proud of her. Oh, yeah. I mean, if you ask me what my greatest achievement is, I'd say my two children. I mean, of course, I gave birth to them, I educated, and what they became, they did the work, but I'm extraordinarily proud of Ariel. And um, she also, you know, is, takes life in great gulps and has, drives a lot of joy and has so many interests in the arts and in science and leading a company. My son, Joel Garten, is a great businessman. He's also a composer and uh, improvises. He also does uh, uh, drawings. So I have very wonderful, loving, and I love them greatly, multi-talented children. You travel the world, uh, you have extensively, um, and that's been a big influence in your, heart, in your art. How has that influenced you? Well, I think travel is very important in getting rid of your ego. Because, you know, you think the corner you live in is so important and everybody will know, and then you go out in the vast world and no one knows where you live or who you are or, you know, what you do. It's of not of much importance to them. And so that humbles you and it allows you to go into other people's lives and learn so much when you're not just so constantly me, me, me. So I did a project in Japan. I lived in a little village of 160 people. And in that part of Japan, uh, they have attrition, uh, older population, young people going to Tokyo. And so um, it's really a bit of a dying community. And there's an art project, a big triennial. And it brings millions of people to this, like 17 villages up in the mountains. 
And I lived there, and my project was to do portraits of the inhabitants. And I arrived there, and I saw this woman standing up on a hill, and she was just like beaming. And most of them are farmers, but they had to do other things as well, because farming wouldn't sustain them. And I asked her, uh, can I do your portrait? And she said, no, pick somebody younger. And I'm like, there is no one younger. <laughs> but it took me a while to, to be in the community and um, eating pickles, drinking tea, until slowly but surely people came to pose for me. And uh, my neighbors were very instrumental because they said, we understand what you're after. It's not just the external beauty, it's the internal beauty as well. And it was a fantastic project. I ended up doing 18 portraits in three months. It was exhibited in the schoolhouse, which had been abandoned. And um, I did a party for all of my models. And they all stood in the schoolhouse that they had gone to but was uh, abandoned. And um, they sang the songs they sang as children. And they felt their lives so enriched by the interchange between me and them because they were just people who lived their lives and I had broadened it so so many people became so fascinated and I gave lectures in Tokyo and in Toronto and had my exhibit and of this little forgotten part of Japan even people in J Japan were just so fascinated by everybody's life they said well you should write like an Anne of Green Gables for this little village because people had poured out their souls to me and told me so much about their youth and their children, and it was just a fabulous experience. Now, I saw a picture of you with a monkey. You were, you were drawing a monkey. Is this where, uh, where the monkeys were? They were Japanese snow monkeys. Yeah. They were about an hour and a half from my village, so yeah. on my day off, I'd go visit the snow monkeys. And they were wild. They'd come down because the ranger would feed them, but at night, they'd go up in the hills. and. Um, so they didn't pay attention to humans. They weren't really that interested. But I sat there for so long that um, the number one monkey came with a little tiny monkey to pose for me, to show me that this was you know, his monkey, his little baby. And then I watched another like infant pick up a stick and start to imitate me. The, the monkey was trying to draw. So it was a, f a fabulous experience, just communicating with these monkeys. Do you think that, I mean, you're highly creative um, and, and very talented. Uh, where do you think that that creation comes from, that creativity comes from? I think that it's probably something I was born with. I mean, I develop it, but uh, ever since I was a child, I was always making things. And so I kind of look at myself and I see myself as a four-year-old and I see myself as a 60-year-old. and. Um, I think I'm even more curious and joyful as a 60-year-old than I was as a four-year-old, but the interests were the same. That love of cooking, of making things, of beautiful things, of drawing, of, of designing things. It, it's been uh, an evolution through my life. So it's not something that came upon me suddenly. One day I woke up and I said, I'm going to be an artist. It's something that through all the different things, I think on my paintings, my biggest influence is dance, which I studied. And um, you've seen my website, so you know that my, my paintings are full of motion and action and vitality. And I think that comes from my knowledge of dance. And also, when I do a portrait, so much of a person is not in their face. Like, you know, there's the adage, the portal to the soul is the eyes. But it's not really that. It's really your body language. Because I've done portraits, and I usually do the face last, and people will come up to my studio and say, oh, that's so-and-so, with no face. Just the way you hold your body says so much about who you are and what you feel and what you think. And dance helped me see that in people. Well, Vivian, we've uh, got to take a break. And I know that you've got a great success tip. So jump right in there. OK, well, there's. Two forms of success. There's the internal form of success and the external form of success. And when those two meet, that's perfection. And how do you get there? Well, you know, the same step that you take around the block, you take the same steps to go a thousand miles. But in that thousand miles, you see so many landscapes, you meet so many people and have so many experiences. And that informs in the end who you are. So what's the key to success? Just go out one step at a time. That's good to know, mm -hmm. thanks for that.
We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, more on Extraordinary Women TV. So stay where you are. Welcome back to Extraordinary Women TV. I'm Shannon Skinner, and I'm speaking with Vivian Reese, a Toronto-based artist, multi-dimensional artist. Now, you know, when we were speaking at the break, uh, I had commented that many artists believe, or people believe, that great art has to come from pain. Uh, what do you think about that? Well, there are difficult things that one goes through in life, and it, it does somehow form you. But that's not the only thing that life is about. As I said before, life is really meant to be enjoyed and full of joy, curiosity, and wonder. And I don't think that you need to suffer. I think that actually that's meant to marginalize artists, that artists are not part of society. There's something, they're somewhat on the edge. And that's not really true. Like, to really be full and... Uh, and work really well. I mean, you need to sleep well, you need to eat well, you need to take care of yourself, you need to be healthy. So just those things that are taking care of yourself, don't go with that cliche of suffering. It's really taking good care of yourself that makes you able to express yourself and share it with the world. And so what do you hope that your art um, will do for, for people out there in the world? What I want to do is stimulate people, stimulate their minds and their hearts to be in sync and really see the beauty in the world. Well, Vivian Reese, I have really enjoyed this time with you. Uh, if anyone has any questions uh, or wants to see your art or f find out more about you, where can they find you on the internet? They can go to my website, which is vreese.com, V-R-E-I-S-S.com. -S I also have a blog that's Vivian Reese. And I hope you'll enjoy both of them. Well, Vivian, thanks for being here today, and I wish you all the best. And thank you so much for creating that beautiful work of yours. Oh, thank you for having me. It's been lots of fun. Well, if you want more information about the show, past guests, past episodes, I'd encourage you to visit my website at extraordinarywomentv.com. If you are interested in transforming your life, I hope these stories have inspired you. You've been watching Extraordinary Women TV. I'm Shannon Skinner. See you soon.